this pandemic is actually um, deepening inequalities and will um, uh, end up with a, a world which is even more unequal than it has been before. There is a big digital divide in terms of the kind of infrastructure that is available in different parts of the world, um, the kind of um, um, personal equipment that people have, uh, the kind of um, uh, ability, the facility that they have to make use of this. But, but more importantly, I think that uh, reliance on digital also has much more deeply embedded uh, systemic effects that um, there's greater reliance, for example, on um, digital technologies and artificial intelligence. Well, you know, the, the, you, you can have digital uh, diagnostics, telemedicine and all of that, and, and the sort of the, the digital divide in terms of access uh, deepens those inequalities in, in uh, access to health. But we also know that deeper down in a more sophisticated, in a less transparent way, that there are biases that get built into the collection of data in big data that drives um, AI. We know that access to health is unequal. And everywhere in the world, once again, living in New York, it has become a big public issue, an issue of public debate that um, population groups that are disadvantaged and who happen to be low income, um, migrants, immigrants, um, so forth, uh, these vulnerable and already, already marginalized populations are disproportionately at risk of contracting the uh, illness and uh, vulnerable to, um, to suffering from it uh, severely. Beyond the health sector, there are the economic consequences. The, the, the loss um, of income, jobs, um, other opportunities, social opportunities that are lost, such as education of children, are once again very disproportionately borne by the marginalized and vulnerable groups. And, and I will give you uh, the example of the garment sector. What has this um, pandemic meant for people working in that value chain? You know, when this pandemic came out, you know, obviously people weren't buying clothes. So there was a, a reduced demand. And then, boom, you know, the order is canceled. Did they get paid? No, they didn't. That just shows you that the costs are borne disproportionately by people at the very bottom of the value chain who are who can least afford to absorb the shock. The reason why uh, the, the loss is borne by the people at the bottom um, is all due to the social institutions that we have of political bargaining, right? Power, power asymmetries. In fact, in many cases, the contracts had provisions for cancellation, but in fact, you can declare force majeure. In order to do that, you have to be a well-resourced organization, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of expertise. This also illustrates the importance of um, the structures of power that is actually a driver of how you know, how, how the, 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 the cards fall. It's not just accident. It is that the, um, the, in this market, the, the least well-resourced players actually uh, are least able to negotiate for their rights. We need institutions that protect those rights, you know, that provide a safety net. We can learn some lessons from other crises. You know, for example, um, 
when there was the HIV um, AIDS crisis, there was a um, mobilization to, um, to protest the high prices of the retroviral, uh, antiretrovirals. And um, so there was a political mobilization of civil society groups, governments of uh, the global south, um, that were able to also ally, build alliances with concerned citizens and develop a sense of solidarity. You know, as a result of a lot of this kind of awareness raising, as well as solidarity, as well as um, changes, there is a lot more um, accessibility for, um, for some of the essential medicines. However, even there, I would say that there has not been enough of a systemic change because, you know, certain provisions are made for this particular disease or that particular medicine, uh, but it's not a syst enough of a systemic change so that today, once again, we are discussing who will be setting the prices of the vaccines when they get uh, developed. Who will pay for the development of the vaccines? You know, it's actually taxpayer money uh, or philanthropic money, right? Because there are a lot of governments that are pledging to, uh, to finance the development of new vaccines. Um, and, and yet, you know, we have to ask, are there provisions in the agreements where the private sector uses this money to develop new vaccines that they will be priced at an accessible level for low-income people and low-income countries that cannot afford huge bills. I still believe that um, human rights, particularly economic and social rights, the right to health, as well as the right to life, the right to uh, a decent wage, uh, right to fair working conditions, um, right to education. These economic and social rights are rights and these are not to be traded away. There is no contradiction between like securing the right to life, right to health, as well as a healthy economy. On the other hand, we do know that the institutions of the free market are not adequate to make sure that there is that complementarity that gets built up. And so you do need institutions of safety nets. You do need to consider health as something that is not a private commodity, um, but a public good. Um, and that is the reason why you cannot consider a vaccine to be a free market commodity like, like any other. And because if it is a free market, com com a market commodity, it's not very profitable for pharmaceutical companies. And that is why, in fact, we have a crisis already of vaccines around the world. I hope that the pandemic will once, you know, reveal the importance of solidarity. I, I hope that um, uh, the, the fact that you cannot protect yourself in Europe if you are going to have uh, countries in Africa unable to access ven uh, vir um, vaccines, for example, uh, will make it quite clear that we are not only interdependent in terms of public health within our communities or within our country, but also globally. And so, you know, this is a moment where international cooperation and the sense of international solidarity is particularly important.